When in San Diego, a stop at the San Diego Zoo is usually on your itinerary, especially if you have young children. To be ready for this massive zoo, let's cover some of the important tips to travel savvy at the San Diego Zoo and make it the best experience possible. Welcome to the Savvy Sites here, the channel that helps you travel savvy. My first three tips are necessary before you even enter the park. In fact, you're going to want to take care of these before you even depart on your trip. They will help set you up for the most success during your day. So tip number one is to buy your tickets bundled with other attractions before you arrive. This will save you money. If you're planning on visiting every attraction San Diego has to offer, there are passes that can save you a significant amount of money. We never do this because we don't try to focus on everything, but rather select attractions. Your best bet is to buy the San Diego Zoo and Safari Park tickets bundled directly from the San Diego Zoo website. If you're going to see the zoo, you have to see the Safari Park. It actually is our favorite out of the two. On that website, there is also a bundle that includes SeaWorld. If you're going to SeaWorld, check the SeaWorld website first and see if they're running a special because they actually often do. And it ends up being cheaper to buy the SeaWorld tickets alone from their website and then the Safari Park and Zoo tickets bundled together from the Zoo site. The second tip I have is to download the San Diego Zoo app. This app proved to be invaluable while in the zoo. The zoo itself is huge and you can grab a paper map while in the park, but the app just seemed to be a lot easier. Rather than trying to figure out where you are at on a paper map, the app just shows you. You can even find out information about each of the animals. They used to have a paper guidebook that the kids loved to get when we would go in so that they could look up the animals as we were looking. But now all we have to do is click on the app, which is actually a lot easier. You can find nearby dining along with menus, restrooms, exhibits, and attractions very easily using the app. You can even make a plan of the animals you want to see if you want to keep track of that while you're in the park. There's even the ability to add your tickets to this app so you don't have to worry about carrying around those paper ones. Part of why you want to buy your tickets early is so that you don't have to wait in line. This brings me to tip number three, which is to arrive early. This was before the zoo opened and you can see people are pouring in. It gets busy fast and as the morning continues, it only gets busier. You will have a better experience if you're there with less people and the only way to do that is to get there early. And you won't have to walk as far from the parking lot. Side note, parking is free, but the parking lot does fill and you might have to make a bit of a trek to the gates if you get there after opening. Tip number four is to take advantage of all that is included in your ticket. So not only do you get entry into the zoo, but there's also two things that are can't miss, and that is the guided bus tour and the aerial tram. The guided bus tour takes you around the zoo and gives you perspectives you can't see from just walking through the zoo on your own. The aerial tram is going to give you a bird's eye view of the zoo and even views of San Diego beyond the zoo. Both attractions can get quite busy. We have found it's better to get on the guided bus tour as soon as you enter the park and to have the shortest wait. The only downside to this is that there's not as many animals out during the early morning. Tip number five, like I just mentioned, certain things can get really busy really fast. Prioritize these things first before you start wandering around looking at the animals. I would suggest taking the guided bus tour first thing, then you might consider heading to Wildlife Explorers Base Camp, which opened just last year and can get really busy later in the day. Then think about taking the tram from the station that's located right by the base camp to the other side of the park. You can then work your way through the zoo exploring all the animal exhibits. Tip number six, be prepared for all kinds of weather. In the morning, it has been quite cool and you might need your sweatshirt, but by lunch it can actually get quite warm and you might need hats, sunscreen, and those sweatshirts are going to need to come off. Make sure you bring bottles of water because it's not worth spending the money on it at the park or having to find a drinking fountain and waste your time. Tip number seven is to be okay with not seeing everything. There's too much to see in one day. It's a huge zoo and it's a ton to cover. So don't feel like you failed or didn't get your money's worth if you leave without seeing it all. Prioritize what you wanna see. You can use the app to do this, making a list of what you want to see the most. Do this before you go to the zoo. Sit with your kids and ask them. My kids always have to see the red panda, lemurs, and giraffes. It'll even mark them on the map for you so you can see where you need to go. 
This next tip might not be one people agree with, but it has never failed me. This tip is to leave before lunch. This tip only works if you get there right when the park opens and you have spent all morning there. The reason I follow this tip every time is that kids get tired, and guess what, so do adults. There is a ton of walking, there's a ton of people, and it can be overload for even the most well-behaved children. This tip is especially helpful with younger children. I've seen way too many kids melting down because they were just done, but their parents were pushing them to see more. It's not worth it to push them. It won't be fun for anyone. I would much rather leave early with everyone happy than push it for too long trying to see everything and taint the memories with meltdowns and tears. Tip number nine is plan your lunch. This might mean you're planning on leaving before lunch and grabbing it somewhere else outside the zoo. This is what we do. San Diego has too many good food options to waste a meal at the zoo. That's just my opinion. The last time we left around lunchtime and went to Stone Brewing at Liberty Station, which allowed the kids to continue their zoo experience by watching the ducks and koi fish in the ponds located within the outdoor space of the restaurant. And we were able to sit back, enjoy a beer, and relax after walking a million steps all morning around the zoo. Or if you really don't want to leave the park, you could plan on eating lunch at one of the many places inside the zoo. We have done this, just be prepared for the high prices and the lower quality, which is pretty typical zoo food. Your last option is you can bring your own if you want to lug it around the zoo and enjoy eating at one of the many tables throughout the zoo. My last tip is come back. It's not goodbye when you leave the gates, but a see you later. Because it's such a large zoo, you can go again and again and probably see something new each time. We've been several times and it's always a fun experience. Each time something new has been added to the zoo, giving us new experience each time we're there along with being able to experience our favorites again and again. If you are headed to the San Diego Zoo, follow these savvy travel tips to make sure you have the best time possible while there, making awesome memories, and you're able to look back at your time there as a wonderful experience. Thank you for joining me and letting me share with you my top tips for experiencing the San Diego Zoo. Make sure to check out my website, thesavvysightseer.com, to find more tips to travel savvy, not only for San Diego, but other destinations. And I would love for you to hit subscribe and click that notification symbol to help make this the go-to channel for savvy travel.